outside the Denver Art Museum looking at this installation wheel by Hawk EIV. Excuse my mispronunciation of the indigenous name that is Edgar Heap of Birds, Cheyenne and Arapaho. And this circular installation shares Native American history. And we'll walk throughout and see some of the symbolism and text here. Obviously, the American Indian Movement, AIM 1973, the reoccupation by Native people of Wounded Knee, prominent one. Edgar Heap of Birds, iconic lettering, which we will see throughout this installation along with all sorts of symbols, animals, birds, patterns. Take a look throughout. This is placed right in front of the Denver Art Museum downtown. Denver, what this is showing is census figures circa 1890. That is right at the end of the Indian Wars and how badly these populations had been destroyed. Numbers down into the thousands. We come around to the other side of that tree, however. For the good news and that those populations circa 2020 have rebounded tremendously. Bright <laughs> spring day here in Denver. That is the recently renovated Martin building, which hosts the permanent collections at the Denver Art Museum. This, the fantastic contemporary Hamilton building. Plaza courtyard out here in front of the museum with this installation. Again, we see names of tribes, nations, events such as the Sand Creek Massacre. We see the railroad spikes indicating railroads tearing through Indian country bringing with them more and more white people, killing the buffalo, Edgar Heap of Birds, peace, question mark. Silver, furs, iron, brass, abalone, shells, knives, kettles, fire steel, reminding us that the native nations long before European settlement had extensive trade routes across North America, U.S. and Mexico. There. Gold, war, starve, suffer. This tree taking a look at the history of various gold rushes throughout the West, Black Hills, then California, which further dispossessed native people of their land, gash into the Black Hills, Pasapa, mining symbols here, representing how native land was dug into a reference to the Dawes Act 
Land and Fraud, Dawes Act in Oklahoma. A further attempt by the federal government to dispossess people, native people, of their land. Bison life ends, res life begins. 160 acres plow and poverty. No explanation needed there for the intent. FBI, which so regularly abuses, investigates, is openly hostile to Native people, particularly back in that AIM movement in the 70s when Native people were attempting to reclaim their sovereignty, occupation of Alcatraz, Graves protect and inventory human remains. The Graves Protection Act in the early 90s sought to prevent the continued archeological digging and or grave robbing of Native American sacred sites. We've got a mention of Fort Marion Prison up here in Fort Marion Prison is in St. Augustine, Florida, which is about 70 miles from where I live. That's where Cheyenne and Arapaho prisoners of war were taken after the Red River War, held there under the shadow of the St. Augustine Lighthouse. And that's actually where the idea for the Indian boarding schools was developed by one of the colonels in charge there, or one of the army officers anyways, Carlisle Barracks referencing the Carlisle Boarding School, a place of untold horror for countless thousands of Native American children, forcibly removed from their families, names changed, forbidden from speaking their language, haircut forced to assimilate to white culture. Buffalo hoof imprints, Christian crosses. All of this symbolism, this history, right outside of the Denver art museum which in the Martin building has a fantastic collection of Native American art, indigenous art, and there we go. The artist and some more about this magnificent installation.